If rock salt isn't taken care of after it's used, it can often find its way to nearby plant and tree roots. Adam Paso has always loved plants and trees, but when he sees piles of snow with heavy salt concentration, that has him concerned. Trees are growing with us and they need a lot of care when they're in the city urban environment. Um, so that's what that's what we do is we take care of our trees. Paso is not just a plant lover, he is also an arborist. As a part of his work, he wants to protect them from rock salt as much as possible. He says trees and shrubs can't handle too much salt. They burn up, they turn brown, um, and this time of the year you really see it on evergreens. Uh, browning needles, um, that's from the salt that's absorbing all the moisture in the roots. He also says the types of trees one plants can make a big difference. Sand is uh, helpful for plants. Uh, it helps drainage a little bit. It just kind of incorporates into our soil, unlike salt, which can disrupt our soils. Instead of rock salt, he encourages the use of sand. Pines can tolerate a lot of salt. Austrian pines, uh, scotch pines, much better than, you know, lowland trees like this, arborvitas that grow in swampy areas. Um, they tend to have a little bit more issues. Other strategies involve the use of gypsum for areas where a lot of road salt will be deployed. For Paso, eliminating the effects of road salt on plants and trees comes down to personal responsibility. You can do a lot personally uh, to your own personal property um, to, you know, put down salt, but then clean it up. That's important, trying to keep it out of the, the mulch beds um, and contain it just onto the impermeable surfaces where it belongs. While Paso says the usefulness of road salt is undeniable, he believes there has to be a balance to protect the local environment. In Brookfield, Philip Boudreaux, Spectrum News.